I want to invite everyone uh, onto this live cast uh, as we look at uh, the topic that I'm calling Advancing the Kingdom Agenda through Prayer or uh, Advancing and Sustaining the Kingdom of God through Prayer. I want us to pray as we start. Everyone who is listening to us, wherever you are, I welcome you. And I pray that the grace of God, the power of God will sustain you. As we, as we listen to this word, I pray that this word is going to change our lives. Let's pray. Almighty Father, in the name of Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, this morning, Jehovah God, I declare your supremacy. As I speak about prayer, as I speak about advancing and sustaining the kingdom agenda, Father, anoint me. I pray, Jehovah God, that you're going to anoint this message, Jehovah God. That this message, Jehovah God, will, will change lives, will heal lives, will raise an army, will raise an end time army. That's going, Father, to advance the kingdom agenda. I thank you. I exalt you in Jesus' name. This morning, uh, like I said, I'm going to preach a message that I'm calling advancing and sustaining the kingdom agenda through prayer. I want us to look at prayer as one of the most important tools of the kingdom of God. As I talk about the kingdom of God, I want us to look what it means. What is the kingdom? What is the kingdom? Uh, as we read the word of God, let's read the word of God. The word of God in Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to read the word of God in Matthew chapter 4. Verse 17, as we look at uh, what's the kingdom of God, as we look at, uh, as we look at uh, the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 4, in Matthew chapter 4 verse 17, Matthew chapter 4 verse 17, I'll read. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent. For the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The first message that Jesus Christ preached after going through the temptation is a kingdom message. And he preached and he preached and said from that time on Jesus preached repent for the kingdom of God is near. As I'm speaking about advancing and sustaining the kingdom agenda, I want us to go through denomination barriers. I want us to go through religious barriers and think about the kingdom of God. It has come a time when we have to think as the kingdom, when we have to think as one, when we have to be united, when we have to be united as the church of Christ. As I was preparing for this message, the Holy Spirit of God was showing me the divisions that are there in our religions. The divisions that are there, that are there in our religion. But this morning I want to say that every one of us, Every one of us, even as we talk about the end time church, as we talk about prayer, we should have kingdom mentality so that we might be one 
kingdom. As I was thinking about the kingdom and researching about the kingdom, one thing about the kingdom, every kingdom has a king. And in this, in the kingdom of God, we have the king of kings and the Lord of Lord Jesus Christ. When you think about a kingdom or a nation, every nation has a constitution. That's the governing law of the land. In the kingdom of God, we have the Bible. Every king, every king has an ideology. Every king has an ideology. If we talk about our king, Jesus Christ, he set forth the agenda of the kingdom. In Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, he set the agenda of the kingdom. And every kingdom has military power. There is no kingdom that does not have military power. This morning as we are talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has an agenda. That's, uh, that's highlighted in Matthew 28 verse 18 and 20. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has an agenda. And for us to sustain this agenda... For us to sustain the to, to sustain this agenda and advance it, it must be done through prayer. It must be done through prayer, and there is no other way apart from waging spiritual warfare. I want us uh, to read in the book of uh, in the in the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. As we read this, as we read this verse, I want us to look at uh, several things that are highlighted here. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven I want us to look at uh, I want us to look at this scripture. I want us to look deeply into this scripture. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. Uh, let's look at this scripture as I get into uh, as as I get into um, into explaining this scripture there are few things that we are going to look at that are highlighted here the bible says from the times of john the baptist until now let's look at the word force because the bible says that the kingdom has been forcefully advancing the meaning of the word force is violence strength active power mighty the meaning of the word force means strength of power of war it means armament it means troops and uh, an ally of navy military or navy forces military force when we use the word forceful it means to overpower by strength Today, I'm calling the church of Christ. And I want us to know that the devil has not changed strategy. That when Jesus Christ said from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God has been forcefully advancing. And it means that the kingdom of God will advance by force. It means the kingdom of God will be taken over by men who will exert force into the kingdom of the devil to advance the kingdom agenda. When I talk about the kingdom agenda, when I talk about valiant, valiant men that will, will, will take over the kingdom, I mean that the church must unite as one 
the church must come together as one in prayer in raising an army in raising men in raising in in putting up a military strategy that's going to defeat the kingdom of the enemy as i was praying last night i was thinking how do you feel when you see god's general fall by covid 19 how do you feel when the churches are closed how does it feel how 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 does it feel when uh, when everyone is at home and i can assure you normally when people are at home not many of us pray and uh, those who've been in prayer i want to say that there is a heaviness it is, you use a lot of force nowadays to pray. One, because most people are not praying. Two, because this is a strategy of the devil. The devil is sitting on the spiritual realm. The devil is oppressing the church. The devil is oppressing the children of God. I want to, I want to address the church this morning. That if we have to defeat the enemy we have a common enemy our enemy is the devil and the strategy that we see the strategy that we see is the strategy from hell this covid 19 is a strategy from hell and we must come together as a church we must unite we must speak in one voice just as the first church did they this the first church meet the first church met and they were in unity and one accord as i've said from matthew 11 matthew chapter 11 verse 12 the Bible says that the kingdom of God has been forcefully advancing. I was thinking about the church coming with a strategy. Speaking about as one. Raising an army. Raising an entire money. An, an entire army. That is going to take over. That's going to usher in the coming of Jesus Christ. There has been a lot of infighting on our denomination lines. But one thing that I want to put clear today, that all of us have different calling, but we have one agenda. We have one king. We are serving one kingdom, the kingdom of God. And if you are serving the kingdom of God, if you are serving one king, then we must come together as one, irrespective of your calling. We must know that we are, we, we, we are in the kingdom of God. We've been called with the kingdom agenda this is not the time to pray church this is not the time to be divided when our generals are dying this is the time to unite this is the time to fight on this is the time to raise a strategy this is the time the church should come together and fight as one let's read another scripture in the book of luke chapter 11 but he Knowing their thoughts, say to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to dissolution, and a house divided against a house divided against a house falls. This was Jesus when he was told that he was using the power of Beelzebub to, to, to cast out demons. And he said that a kingdom a kingdom that divided against itself will not last. So Jesus was talking about unity. He was talking about unity in the kingdom of God. He was talking about unity. And if the kingdom of God on earth has to stand, then we must, we must stand united. We must stand as one. We must adapt a common front to the, towards the devil. We must fight as one towards the enemy. Advancing and sustaining the kingdom of God through agenda. If you look at the, kingdom of, the kingdoms of the world, if you look at nations, there are those nations that we call G 
seven or the great seven. And these nations have two things in common. One, they have what we call uh, economic power. And two, they, ha- they have what we call military military power and those two things those two things are the things that make those nations because without economic power without uh, military power they have uh, uh, they, 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 they will not be great again I want to I want to bring this concept to us this morning that if the kingdom of God has to stand we must raise an army. We must raise an end time army. We must raise an end time army that's going to stand, that's going to have a kingdom mentality. If you look at, uh, if you look at uh, most of these nations that have military power, they have very sophisticated military equipments. One thing that I want you to know about this nation, they invest a lot on the military. Most nations of the world, most kingdoms of the world, they invest a lot. They invest a lot in military. And the reason why they invest a lot in the military is because they know without military power, with only economical power, without military power, then they cannot be able to advance. I want to bring this idea, I want to speak to the church, that unless the church of Christ come together as one, we invest on our, we invest on our members and we train them how to fight. We fight as one, then it's going to be very easy to defeat the devil. One side there was the army of Israel. The other side was the army of uh, the Philistine. And there was a fighter, a man, a valiant man, a man who fought all his life and he was standing in for the Philistine. And David, coincidentally, was sent by the father To go and find out how the brothers were doing and to take them provisions. And in uh, in verse, uh, let's go to verse 32. Let's go to verse 32. Because I know God is raising an army. God is raising an end time army. People who are uncompromising. People who will be ready to face the enemy. And David said to Saul... Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. This was David, a young man. David, after listening to Goliath and looking at whatever was happening in the battlefield, he got a holy anger. And he decided, I'm not going to let the enemy defile. I'm not going to let the enemy defile the armies of the living God. And David, David got angered by the words of the Philistine. David got angered by what was happening. David got angered by the circumstance and he decided to take action. I'm calling you into holy anger. It's a time that the church should be angry with what's happening. That God should fill us with the holy anger. That we stand in and fight for the kingdom. David was filled with holy anger. After he realized that the enemy, the enemy is defiling the armies of the living God. Goliath was defiling the army of the living God. I want to I want to ask the church this morning. How are you feeling staying at home? How are you feeling? And I pray that this morning that most of us get holy anger that God is going to raise a army men men and women with the spirit of David who are going to be angry, who are going to be angered. 
by what's happening in the world, by what's happening. God is going to raise men and women that are going to have holy anger and they are going to stand in for the kingdom. This is not the time to sit. We cannot continue sitting while we are watching our generals die. We cannot continue sitting. And then when the church is closed, we cannot afford to continue sleeping. When, uh, when, the church, when the church is asleep, we cannot. And I'm calling upon the church. I'm calling upon the church of Christ. I speak holy anger that men and women will be angered that the church are closed. You cannot go to the altar. You cannot take your sacrifice to the altar. Our generals are dying. The church has been ridiculed. The church has been mocked. This is the time that we must stand as one, as a Nami, and we get the spirit of David. We get angered with what the enemy is doing. We get angered with what the enemy is, is doing against the church. David got angered. David got angered and he decided to fight the enemy. This morning I declare and this is my prayer that God is going to pour the holy anger, zeal into the church today. That God is going to, to, to pour out his anger unto the church. And the church will fight on. This is not the time to sleep. This is not the time to be divided according to the denomination lines. This is not the time to think religion. This is the time to think about the kingdom of God. In, uh, in 1 Samuel verse, uh, chapter 17 verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose, uh, and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Put them in the shepherd's bag which he had in his crypt. His slain was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. It doesn't matter the size of the enemy that we are facing. I know, I know it has not been easy because of this enemy called COVID-19. And I want to say this is the strategy of the devil. This is the strategy and the agenda of the kingdom of the devil. And what I want to say this morning is that as David got angered by the Philistine, abusing the army of the living of the living God defying the armies of Israel and defiling the name of the Lord God of Israel David got angered David got angered he decided David the kingdom of your kingdom is attacked you must stand and fight for the kingdom. This morning, I want to call the armies of God. I want to call the church. I want to call the church in, into prayer. This is the time, just as, as David decided, that I cannot just sit and see the armies of the Lord, of the God of Israel be defiled. I cannot sit and see the nation of Israel being defiled. I'll have to fight. David, stand, fight for your nation, fight for your nation, otherwise the enemy will take over. This morning I'm calling the church, I'm calling men and women, who, and I pray that God is going to feel you with the spirit of David, with the spirit of anger, holy anger, that the God will raise men who will get angry with what the enemy is doing and they will be ready to fight for the kingdom. They will be ready to fight for the agenda of the kingdom. They will be ready to fight for their generals. I'm calling men and women who are ready, who are ready to fight for the church. David stood. God filled him with holy anger and he was angered with the Philistine. And David had been trained by God when he was looking after the 
ships. And this morning, I want to call the church. I want to call the church this morning. Whoever who will be listening to this live cast. Is the time we have kingdom mentality. Is the time the, we must face the enemy as one. This is the time that we must fight as one. Illegardless of our denomination. Illegardless of our religion religion barriers this we must break our religion barriers and think as the kingdom come together as the kingdom as warriors of the living god and fight as one as we fight our common enemy i'm reminded of the days of ahab and jezebel during the time of ahab and jezebel we see Elia, after he had prophesied that there is no going to be rain, there, is no, there was no going to be rain, there was no going to be rain for three years, we see that according to his word and his prayer, that there was no rain in Israel for three years. In the book of 1 Kings 18, Let's read the, the, the first Kings 18 verse 19. Because this is the time for war. This is the time where the church has to stand. This is the time that our spiritual fathers must come, must come together as one. We fight a common enemy. A, con a common enemy that has attacked the church. A common enemy... That has attacked our nation a common enemy that has attacked the world this is not the time to sit this is the time to fight and i pray that god is going to raise generals that will fight that will fight for the church in first kings chapter 18 verse 19 now there therefore send and gather me all the israel unto mount camel and the prophets of Baal, 450. And the prophets of the grooves, 400. Which eat at Jezebel's table. There were 450 prophets of Baal. That were eating at Jezebel's table. The kingdom of Israel had departed from true worship. The kingdom of Israel has departed from seeking the true God. And they were worshipping the God of Baal. And at this time, we see Elia prophesying that there's no going to be rain for three years. And sure to his word, to his prophetic word, there was no rain. There was no rain in Israel for three years. I want us to look at, uh, to look at Elia because I pray that God is going to give us the spirit of Elia. When things go wrong, you get the holy anger. Elia was angered by what was happening in Israel. He was angered as the prophet of God that there was no true worship in Israel. Ahab and, Je Ahab and Jezebel have departed from the ways of David and they were busy. They were busy worshiping Baal. So Elia was angered by what was happening. And we see after God spoke to him, he gathered, Israel gathered, Israel gathered. As we've read in 1 Kings 18, 19. Let me read that again. Now therefore send and gather me all, the, all, all Israel unto, my, unto Mount Camel. So De Elijah ordered all the Israel, all the Israel to gather at Mount Camel. Because... He was, he was angered by what the enemy was doing. He was angered by Ahab and Jezebel because they had departed from the true worship. They had, Israel had departed from the true worship and Israel was not, Israel was not worshiping the true God. So, Elijah got angered and we see, we see after this, Elia gathered all the 450 prophets of Baal and they were killed. It was a time where Elia had 
fight for the kingdom. It was a time where Elia had to fight, had to fight for his God. E, 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 enough was enough. This was not a time to sit. This was not a time just to sit and see things going wrong. He, took, he was proactive and he took a step and fought, and fought for the kingdom. And God gave him victory. I want to say, just as Elijah was angered, just as this prophet of God had the courage to face 450, 450 prophets of Baal, I pray that in the church today, God is going to raise men and, men and women who will not be afraid, who will not look at the numbers, men and women, <coughs> men and women who are filled by the Spirit of God and they will fight for the kingdom. I'm calling the church to raise a troop. This is my prayer this morning. The God of Israel is going to, to pour his spirit upon the church. And he's going to raise valiant men, forceful men, violent men, men who are full of strength, men who, who are active, men who will have the military, who will have a military mentality, spiritual warriors who will fight for the church, men and women who will be ready not to sleep, who will push themselves until they see the kingdom, uh, the, the, the kingdom agenda established. I was... Uh, Today I'm thinking military because today as I was praying about this message, it was all about spiritual warfare. There's a troop in the U.S. called the Rangers. And uh, this troop that are called the Rangers is a very, is a very well trained troop. But that one thing that caught my attention as I was researching about this, they are trained in groups of 10. And as they are trained in groups of 10s, they are trained to think as one. What do I mean? That as they are trained, as they are trained, as they go for war, you look at the safety of the whole group. In other words, if one, of, if one of us is not safe, then the whole group is not safe. If, if it's not safe for all of us to attack, then we do not attack. If it's not safe for, for all of us to come out, then we do not come out. They are trained to think as one. They are trained in a group of ten. And they are very highly trained. And they think as one. They think, don't think about yourself. You think about the whole, you think about the whole group. The whole, the, the whole group. And that, like I've said, they are trained in tens. This morning, I'm calling the church. Let's stop thinking individually. Let's have the kingdom mentality. That will think about the whole church agenda. Let's stop thinking individually. Let's stop thinking as one. Think about the kingdom of God. The action that I'm taking now. What repercussion will it have in the kingdom of God? The, whatever I'm saying today. What, will it, what repercussion will have in the kingdom of God? Whatever I say today, or whatever action that I'll do today, what repercussion will it have in the church? Let's stop thinking about our individually. Think, let's have the big picture. Let's think big. Let's think about the kingdom. Let's think about the kingdom as whole. Let's think about the kingdom of God. Let's stop thinking about ourselves. Think about the kingdom of God. If we share one spirit, if we share one Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if we are members of the same kingdom, 
I said as a nation, as a kingdom, there are many ministries. People have been given diverse ministry, but with one agenda, the kingdom agenda. So this morning, like I've shared about the rangers, they are trained. This is a troop that's trained to do, uh, uh, to do very, hard, uh, very hard tasks. These are troops that are, se- that are sent to, co- to do compact in areas that are difficult, in areas where other troops cannot succeed. They think as one. This is the time as a church. We must come out from our own personal mentality, from our religion, from our denomination, and think as one as we face a common enemy. This is a time as the rangers, any decision that you make, you must ask yourself, is my brother safe? As you sleep, you must ask yourself, as I'm sleeping, is my brother safe? As you pray, think about the kingdom of God. Stop these selfish prayers. Stop these selfish prayers. Stop this I, myself. And think about the kingdom. Think about other generals. This is the time for unity. As a nation, we must unite. As a church, we must unite. We must think as one. We must face this common enemy as one. We must speak in one voice because we must advance and sustain the kingdom agenda. When you think about spiritual warfare, there are battles that you, you can win alone. There are battles that you can win on a personal level. There are battles that will need. The Bible says where two or three, there are battles that you cannot win alone. You'll need two or three of your brothers to support you. There are battles that will call for corporate Depending with, the, depending with the fight that you're fighting. When we talk about coronavirus and what's happening in the church today, this, this battle cannot be won by individuals. This battle has to be won by the body of Christ. When we come together as the body of Christ, when our spiritual fathers come together, as the body of Christ, there is a corporate anointing that's released. There is, a, there is energy, synergy that's released. There is power that's released that's going to fight the enemy. This battle is calling us to come together. When power is concentrated, we get energy. When energy is concentrated, we get synergy. And I'm talking about corporate anointing. I'm talking about the the power of unity. The power of the church coming together. The power of the church speaking with one voice. The power of the church standing in as one voice. uh, Fighting as one, regardless of your denomination. In the address of your religion, we, ca- we should come together as one and face this common enemy because we need corporate anointing. We need power. We need to concentrate power. We need to concentrate energy. We need synergy. That's what we need. Like we saw in Matthew eleven twelve, Jesus Christ saying, since the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom has been forcefully advancing. I want to say this is the time. If, if Jesus Christ said since the time of John the Baptist, it means we are in those times. It means we are still in the times where the kingdom of God has to advance forcefully. Where the kingdom of God is suffering violence, then we have to come together. We have to counter every power. We have to say no as one and we have to be forceful 
We have to use violence. We have to be active and wage spiritual warfare. We must stop the enemy. We must stop his agenda. We must not sit when the church has been battered. We must not sit when our generals are dying. We must not sit when our members are backsliding. We must not sit when the church has been drained financially. We must not sit. This is the time we must think outside the box. This is the time we must think as the whole body. This is the time that we must advance the kingdom agenda. We must think about our kingdom. We must think about our Lord and Savior. We must think about Matthew 28, 18 to 20. We must think about how we are going to evangelize and we must stop this enemy. We must say no to the enemy. We must, we, we must counter every strategy of the enemy and we must stop the enemy because we must use force. When we talk about violence, these are men and women who have denied themselves, who are ready to, to be forceful, who are ready to use all this, who are ready to use everything at their disposal to see that the agenda of the kingdom of God advance. I'm speaking about strength of power of war. That if we have to win this battle, we must come together as spiritual warriors. We must come together and we must come together and put our strength, our power together for war. We must train, we must train the church how to wage war. We must train the church of what weapons to use. We must train the church of the weapons of our warfare, even as uh, we reveal, we reveal the strategy of the enemy. When there is war, when there is war between two nations, each nation try to gather as much as intelligence, information about the systems of the enemy. In other words, what I'm saying, if you have to be successful in fighting the enemy, you must understand the infrastructure of the enemy. You must understand the strength of your enemy. You must understand uh, their strategy for you to win. I'm, I'm saying that if the church has to win, if the church has to win this battle, if the church has to win this battle, then we must come together as one. We have generals in the church. We have our bishop and other people who reveal the strategy of the kingdom of the devil and give strategy of war. We need a common strategy. We need a common strategy of war. We need to understand the strategy, the strategy of the enemy. Right now we are battling COVID-19. And as I said, this is the strategy of the enemy. I pray that God is going to raise armies. God is going to raise men and women with the spirit of disarmament. Men and women will disarm the strategy of the devil and reveal it to the church. Then the warriors, mighty men of valor, the men of church, spiritual warriors will take it up and fight the battle until we stop, until we stop, until we stop the enemy. David was able to stop Goliath. David was able to stop the Philistine from attacking Israel for many years. And I want to say, it's possible, it's possible we can be able, we can be able to stop the enemy. How do you feel when the church cannot evangelize, when we cannot do open airs, how do you feel as a child of the kingdom? I want you, I want you. I'm praying that God is going to fill you with holy anger. That you're going to, to act as David did. We are going to be proactive as a church. And you're going to stop 
the enemy. We are going to stop the enemy. This is the time not to be defensive. You know, when we talk about war strategy, you can choose to be offensive or you can choose to be defensive. When we talk about offensive, is when you attack the enemy. You attack the enemy. You've learned his strategy, the strategy of the enemy, and you attack the enemy. So, you, when you are offensive, the enemy will go on the defensive. But one thing about being offensive, you are in charge. You hit, you hit, the, uh, you hit the infrastructure of the enemy. You destroy the infrastructure of the enemy. And as you, you are offensive, as you get offensive, the, the enemy will be defensive. It means you're in control. I'm calling the church to go to the offensive. I'm calling the church not to be defensive. Being defensive is when you wait the enemy to hit the church and then you react. You react, from, you react from what the enemy is doing. So you are busy going around. You are busy going around putting off fires that have been lit by the enemy. But when you are on the offensive, it means you are in control. It means you understand your strategy. It means you understand the movements that you have. You have intelligent, intelligence information about the enemy and you are ready to go to the you are ready to attack. You are ready to offend the, the enemy. I'm calling the church. Let's come out of the defensive. Let's come out from being defensive. Let's, let's, let's go on the offensive. Let's attack. Let's attack the, the kingdom of the enemy. Let's attack before we attack. In the name of Jesus. Spiritual warfare. We have to overcome the enemy. We have to overpower the enemy. We have to, we have to be on top of the game. Because Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior is risen. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he's risen. He has overcome. He has overcome. We shall overcome. From wherever you are listening, you are listening to me from, I want you to know this morning that we've been called to be warriors. As long as you're born again, prayer and spiritual warfare is not a reserve of a few the church has been called to pray. The church has been called to wage spiritual warfare. The church has been called to pray. As I finish, I want you, I want you to think about this. That if all of us spoke in one voice, wherever you are in the world, and God revealed to you the enemy that's attacking, that attacking, where you live, if God will give us a strategy, then everywhere we, 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 we push on, we, we become offensive. Every church becomes offensive. We adapt a common strategy. Then I'm telling you, we are going to win and we are going to stop whatever agenda that the enemy has for the church. This morning, I'm calling the church to prayer. Like I said in the beginning, it has not been easy to pray. It has not been easy to pray because you, you, uh, those, of, uh, those who are praying can uh, witness can uh, witness that you use a lot of energy to pray. And I can tell you that most people who are at home are unable to pray. Not that they don't want to pray. They are unable to pray because of pressure that's there in the spiritual realm. There is a heaviness in the spiritual realm that's, uh, that's, uh, that's oppressing people and they cannot be able to pray. I want us to say a prayer together, wherever you are, if you can be able to stand on your feet. I want us to do a bit of spiritual warfare as we ask God to give us the spirit of David, to give us the spirit of Elia,
to give us holy anger to give us a, a military mentality to understand that we belong to the kingdom of God and we've been called to fight I want us to go to, to be proactive. Let's go on the offensive. Let's attack the kingdom of the enemy. Let's not just sit when our generals are falling. Let's not just sit when the, church, when the churches are closed. Let's not just sit when, uh, when we cannot evangelize. Let's not, let's not just sit when the church has been ridiculed. Let's think as, as one Let's fight our common enemy. Let's have unity. Let's have unity. Let's think as one. Let's fight as one. Let's come together as the church of Jesus Christ. Irrespective of where you are and what denomination you belong to. Or what religion you belong to. Let's come together as one and say yes, we are one. If you look at Joshua, Joshua had valiant man he had fighting man if you look at david he had fighting man if you look at the kings of the old they had fighting man this is the time the church should learn from from them we should learn from david we should learn we should learn from joshua let's raise men and women let's raise warriors let's raise soldiers let's raise men and women who are going to fight for the church wherever you are you can uh, you can join me in prayer even as we pray that god is going to raise spiritual warriors troops with military mind that are going to fight for the church father in the name of jesus by your holy spirit I thank you, Jehovah God, for this day. Because, Father, you are in business of raising warriors. You are in the business of raising, of raising warriors in the church, in the kingdom, who will advance the kingdom agenda. Almighty Father, in the name of Jesus, as you fill David with holy anger, as you fill David with holy anger, and he was angry with the Philistine because they had abused, they had mocked the armies of the living God. Father, raise men and women with the spirit of David, men and women who are going to be filled with holy anger, who are going to stop the enemy from attacking the church. Father raise men and women oh God in this city of Royal raise men and women in Jesus new life ministries raise men and women Jehovah God raise warriors I'm calling warriors in Jesus new life ministries I'm calling warriors in Royal I'm calling warriors in the county of Kambu and all the 47 counties of this nation I'm father I'm speaking Father, to all the seven continents of the world, Jehovah, raise men and women, raise warriors, O oh God, Holy Spirit of God. We are living in your dispensation. We are living in your times. Raise men and women, raise men and women, raise warriors. I'm calling warriors in Africa. I'm calling warriors. Asia. I'm calling warriors in the Middle East. I'm calling warriors in America. I'm calling warriors in Austria. I'm calling warriors in Europe. I'm calling warriors in China. I'm calling warriors, Jehovah God, in Russia. Father, I'm calling warriors. Father, raise warriors in Africa, Jehovah God. Raise warriors in Africa, Jehovah God. Men and women, oh God, who are going to fight for the kingdom agenda who are going to fight for the advancement of the kingdom who are going to fight oh god and destroy the strategy of the devil father raise men and women raise men and women raise men and women jehovah god every person who is listening to this life cast wherever you are and you're saying yes i'm ready 
I'm ready. I'm ready to fight on. I'm ready to be anointed as an end time warrior. I want to pray with you. Jehovah God, every person who will listen to this live cast, this is my prayer, Jehovah God, that the Spirit of God and the Spirit, the Spirit of God will empower them. Jehovah, I pray, oh God, that holy anger will come to every one of us. That Jehovah, Jehovah will reach a point where Jehovah God will be angered by what is happening. Father, raise men and women, oh God. Anoint them, oh God, that are willing. Anoint every person that will listen to this life cast, wherever they are in the world. Anoint them. And I declare that Jehovah God, Jehovah God, they are going to be spiritual troops. They are going to be spiritual troops with the military mind, with the military mind. Father, who are going to listen, who are going to listen from the general. You are raising up generals all over the world. You are raising generals all over.